and I see Zari following her, he didn't even need to say anything else because we both knew what had happened. I asked him, when did you do it? About two weeks ago. Oh, no, no. I have never been good at walking up to women. Like, I'm not bad at talking to them. I'm just really bad at initiating, you know, starting stuff. Like, if I find a girl attractive, I don't even think I'm good at making it known that I find her attractive. Girls will talk about, oh my God, I saw the most beautiful guy at Target today. And it'll look like this. Pause. <laughs> bro, you can't be laughing, bro. You can't be laughing. You can't be laughing. <laughs> no, that was not. I'll say, yo, I went to Target and I saw the most beautiful looking girl. And it'll look like this. And I'm being so serious right now, bro. Niggas will talk about, oh, this girl was looking at me. So I, I had to holler and check her temperature. You know what I'm saying? No, because if a girl looks at me, the only temperature I'm checking is the damn weather app. But if a girl walks up to me, that's completely different. I have never struggled with that. But ironically, the problem used to be reversed. Like I used to be the most bold shot taker when I was younger, bro. I'm talking half court, three on me. Ugh. But that shit never went in because I couldn't talk to women to save my life back then. But I was bold too bold. So boom, I'm in middle school and there's this girl named Shani. Now me and Shani were really cool because we shared the same humor. Throw the Harlem shake. Which at 12 years old in sixth grade wasn't that difficult. But we were tight. We'd talk every day. We'd joke all the time. And it, and it helped that we shared a lot of classes together. From the outside looking in, you would think that we were a school couple. But from the inside looking in, I was Mariana Trench levels of deep in the friend zone. Under the sea. Face ass. And it was my fault because I could just never take that step out of the platonic bubble. I was just too scared. Now, Valentine's Day was coming up. And in one of the classes that we shared together, the teacher wanted us to make these mailboxes out of cardboard. And she also wanted us to make Valentine's Day cards for everyone in the class so we could put the cards in each other's mailbox. So me and Shawnee are making our boxes and just chopping it up and stuff. Let me get to the topic of puberty. And that was because there was this one kid in our class who was one of them Captain America super soldier as little kids. Like, bro, was 200 pounds in sixth grade with a full beard. Like, he had more more hair on his face in sixth grade than I do now as a 23 year old man. So we're talking about that. And then Shani starts talking about how she's self-conscious that she hadn't developed fully in the chest area like some of the other girls in our class, if you get what I'm saying. And she was being very vulnerable and showing a new level of trust in our relationship that honestly made this conversation a really strong bonding moment for us. And I was not paying attention at all because this conversation it gave me an idea. See, I wanted to ask her to be my Valentine's for a long time, but I just didn't know how to do it. And as she was talking about how she's self-conscious about her body type, a light bulb went over my head and I knew exactly what to do. So we continue on with our conversation, eventually changing the topic and getting back to joking and stuff. The class finishes making their mailboxes and we get to making the Valentine's Day cards for each other. And I get to meticulously crafting the most elegant Valentine's Day card for Shani. The class period comes to an end. We then take the Valentine's Day cards and put them on, put them in each other's mailboxes and stuff. And we head to lunch. Now. At lunch, everyone's opening their mailboxes, looking at all their cards and stuff. And I'm looking at my box, practically throwing everything out of it because the only card I care about is the one that I was supposed to get from Shani. And I find it, it's this little white card with a heart-shaped sticker on it that says yo-yo written on it in Shandy's handwriting and holding that card felt like I was holding the keys to our suburban house with a white picket fence and mildly racist neighbors. I was in love. I opened the card and it says to my best friend, yo-yo. Heart, Shani. Ouch! Ouch! I'm looking at my name on that card, Heart, bro. I think I'd rather see Yo-Yo in a death note than with the words best friend next to it, bro. But I don't even get time to dwell on it because I look over and I see Shani walking towards me Live it. She is mad as hell. She stomps her way to my table holding a crumpled up Valentine's Day card. The one that I gave her. She gets to my table, slams the card on the table, and she just gets to chewing me out, bro. Why the fuck would you give me this? You think this is funny? You're sick. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She shows me the card. Well, what was on the card, yo, yo? All I did was draw shiny. Oh, uh, with some D cups. You what? I drew her with, with some things on her. I knew it was something that she was self-conscious about, so I wanted to let her know like what her potential could be. But the only problem was like in sixth grade, I wasn't the best at drawing, so I'm pretty sure I drew her looking crazy. To this day, I still can't even draw boobs that well. So like, I can only imagine what it looked like back then. But in my head, 
I thought it was a perfectly valid Valentine's Day card, but she did not agree. And that's what I mean when I say my heart was in the right place. I was bold. I just did not know what I was doing. And I, I just could not talk to women. So I spent that Valentine's Day alone. And that's how I would spend every Valentine's Day until the year 2020 when I had my first Valentine's and the day I lost my virginity. But it was not all sunshines and rainbows because that was also the same day that my own brother became my Eskimo bro. Let's fast forward into 2020. Just moved into a new place in downtown Austin. As I've said in my previous Tinder videos, when I moved downtown, one of the main goals I had was to talk to people and just experience being an adult because I was 20 at the time, but genuinely I had zero life experience. And one of the first things I did was hop straight to dating apps. Now, I know that's not the best approach, but you gotta give me some slack because honestly, I think the way people, or the way that most people build relationships is through either work, school, or hobbies. And I had none of those. So I went to Tinder to find a community and learn things about myself. I was also horny, okay? So boom, I'm on Tinder swiping and talking and swiping and talking. And the only thing I learned about myself was that I scared the host. So since I mortified the maidens, I went to go talk to my friends who would help me, you know, come up with messages and stuff. And I learned about them that they also have no game either i remember this one time i was at the gym with cheerio over here i had to get him to get up to tell this story it's actually pretty coincidental that he's here remember this time i was talking to this girl like at the gym and i was trying to figure out things to tell her like oh, while no, we were no. at the gym you, you were, were talking like, to a girl at the, you you was talking to a girl you, it, you was like, texting I was in, the the in the gym he's never talked to a girl at a gym before like it is like <laughs> you're, you're good so i'm texting her and she said like some ice breaking shit. what do you do or, like what do you like to do and i remember handing the phone to you and being like yo do you have any idea like what i should say yeah i was like yeah let me cook that's not what you said so i slid my phone to him and i'm like yo could you help me come up with a response and he goes yeah yeah i got you so i'm trying to think of like what i'm gonna send but as i'm there fucking thinking bro i'm like you know what let me finish my set first so i put if i put the phone in my pocket i'm about to send some heat bro that's that's a fact <laughs> i'm about to send some heat so he takes the phone puts it in his pocket does his set and i see him go on his phone so i go up to the bar i'm doing my my thing without a care in the world because i'm like we got the fucking rizzler thinking of a message so i finish my set re-rack i go back to cheerio and he is just down bad bro he's nigga really I, I look at my phone bro my dick drops i'm like <laughs> <laughs> there's so many other body parts that can drop <laughs> yo let me do my thing nigga yo i so saw i look at the phone nigga my dick drops he's looking like drake <laughs> I go up to him. I'm like, yo, did you think of anything to say? And he's like, bro, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. The fuck? I grabbed the phone and I see straight gibberish on that hoe. She asked, what do you like to do? And this nigga deciphered the Iggy Azalea freestyle. I'm looking at the phone and I'm like, bro, what happened? I don't know. I didn't turn off the phone when I put it in my pocket. I'm like, bro, shorty not even that bad, niggas. She's not that bad. I swear to God, she's not that bad. I didn't know. All right. So he starts, so he starts immediately getting on the defensive after fumbling the bag. I could. I just thought you was Jewish, bro. So I sent that shit in German. I'm not adding that part to the video. <laughs> Jewish, they don't even speak German. I thought you was Jewish, so I sent that shit in German. You're not cooking. Don't make that joke. <laughs> so yeah, one of the first times I even asked one of my friends to help me text a girl, they butt texted her. So I say that to say my friends were not much help during my Tinder days, and I had to learn everything by myself. So after weeks of trust in the process, awkward conversations, awkward dates, I finally land this girl's number, Selena. Now, Selena was at the time one of the baddest girls I had ever matched with on Tinder. I actually vividly remember being intimidated by how pretty I found her. I'd overthink my messages, stutter on FaceTime. It's actually mad times I wanted to stop talking to her, do some side quests on the side, and then go back to talking to her. Mind you, I am a 20 year old thinking like this, but you gotta realize I didn't start talking to women until I was 20. Anything before that was a goofy school situation ship or like a crush. This was different. We were both adults without a curfew or parents to worry about, and I had my own place. I knew what was gonna happen at the end of the date if we landed a date, and I landed a date. Not just any date, a sushi date. And in this economy, a sushi date is like me taking you to the damn Virgin Islands, no pun intended. They be taxing at them sushi places. So some time passes and the day of the date comes up, and I'm getting ready and shit. I'm thinking of what I'm gonna say. I'm getting the house set up. I'm doing push-ups, and I'm not gonna lie. I purchased candles, I purchased candles at my living room looking like joe biden's birthday cake if you don't take that joke back you ain't black today was gonna be the day my car got swiped 
and I was mad nervous. Pulls up to the crib and we walk to the sushi spot because once again, I live downtown. We're walking to the spot, we get there. Actually, if you remember my sushi video, this was the same spot. We sit down and we eat and we chop it up and surprisingly, I'm locked in. So we finish eating and we head back to the crib and throw on a movie. Actually, no, it wasn't a movie. We were watching, we were watching Jujutsu Kaisen and I remember that exclusively because I remember looking at it and overthinking when to kiss her because once again, I'm not good at making the first move. I'd like watch a scene and be like, okay, okay, okay. When he goes into the building, I'm gonna kiss her. Wait, wait, what the fuck? He's already in there. Damn. Okay, 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 okay. When he says something, I'm gonna kiss her. Damn. Talking to his okay, okay, okay. When they leave the building, I'm a kid. Why did they even walk in the building in the first? I'm like trying so hard to find like a pause in the show where I can like make my first move, but I just can't get my body to move and do it. But the fire thing about anime is that the intros are like three minutes long. So the next episode hits and the intro plays, and that's my moment. I go in for a kiss, we kiss, and one thing leads to another, and it was bad. Obviously, as anyone's first time, <laughs> obviously, as anyone's first time would be. Fun fact, I actually didn't even know what a bean was until like my fourth or fifth time doing it. This should this should give you a look at what my early sex life was like, but I'm not going to dwell too much on that because that's it's kind of graphic. So I finish doing an absolutely terrible job and she leaves disappointed as hell. I actually don't think she talked to me after this date, but I, I ain't give a damn, bro. It took me 20 years. But I did it. My car got swiped, so I'm going to all my niggas like, yo. I like, yo, bro, I did my thing. I hit it with a Drake and nothing was the same, you dig? I'm telling this story like how 1800 historians tell United States history, bro. So as I'm doing my parade of phone calls, I call my younger brother, not Stanley, my biological younger brother. Stanley's my half brother. The thing about my biological younger brother is that he is the polar opposite of me. He was two years younger than me, but he for sure swiped that card mad times. That nigga did you had an American Express black card. 850 credits. I hit him like, bro, I did it. No way. Swear to God. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Let me see her. I go to her IG to screenshot and show my brother. And I see he's already following her. Yo, yo, it's taking you so long, bro. Let me see. I screenshot it. I send him the pic. Bro. Bro. You didn't. I did. He ain't even need to say anything else because we both knew what had happened. I asked him, when did you do it? About two weeks ago. Oh. <laughs> no. No. Yeah, it was raps. And the worst part, the, the, the worst part, I know he hit it better, bro. It was my first time. I was sick. Yeah. I don't really have too many W's from Tinder. And so you think I have more W's actually meeting women in real life, but that's where you're wrong. There's one thing about me. I am a great planner slash coordinator. Like if I have a problem, I will come up with a solution. Now, when it comes to enacting said solution, well, like Moist Critical, Kevin Hart, or Lil Uzi when he's not standing on his money, I fall short. So boom, I'm 17 and I just moved to Austin, Texas from South Carolina. My brothers and I arrived and we're waiting at the terminal to get picked up by my mom. The bus terminal. Yeah, we moved from South Carolina to Austin, Texas by bus. Somebody tell me how he did it! I have to know! Hella stops, 24-hour commute, smelly bus. We got stranded in Dallas, but we made it out alive. Somebody tell me how he did it! I'm telling you all this because during that 24-hour time span, something happened to my brain. I vividly remember staring out the window and looking at a field and thinking, I'm a be homeless soon. I was a straight C 17 year old about to go into my senior year of high school with no job, no car, no money, and no idea what I wanted to do post high school. And by like hour four of that bus ride, I was in more existential dread than a 54 year old in a Corvette. I was having a midlife crisis at the age of 17. So that drove me pun intended to make my first step towards content creation. I made this Instagram account that I started to post my art on. Now I've always drawn, but when I made that art account, it really motivated me to improve my craft and develop actual skill in a cohesive style. And it showed because months after when I started the new school in Texas, my art teacher pulled me to the side telling me that she liked my style and said I should go to an after school art camp that kids from all over Austin would go to to learn from professional artists to improve their craft. Now I have a strict mom and I was very confident that she was going to pull the plug and dead this idea immediately but to my surprise she actually really liked the idea of me going to a camp and expressing myself so she ended up driving me there and it took place downtown at this museum. We pull up I get out of the car and I go into the building and in true African-American fashion 
I was linked. So when I get into the class, the teacher is already in the middle of a lesson and stuff. So I'm walking in looking for a seat and I realize this class is just filled with women. Not only women, but fine artsy women. This, this. Okay, okay, my dog this better cook. sucks. Huh? I am very much afraid of women at this point in my life, bro. So, <laughs> so I walk down that aisle hitting the weather app calculator combination, making eye contact with no one. I sit down and I hear, all right, class, I'm gonna need you guys to pair up in groups of two so we can start the next drill. And hearing that in a class filled with people, no, not people women <laughs> hearing that in a class filled with women was petrifying to me so everyone stands and starts pairing up and i'm just aimlessly walking around trying to find someone to be my partner and i hear hey i look up and there's this girl facing me and waving oh my god you're here this is she talking to me? I have no clue who this girl is, but she is seemingly mad excited to see me. I'm thinking maybe she's like a classmate of mine that I've never met or something. I know you hear me. What are you doing here? Well, well my teacher said I should pull up. Do you want to be my partner? Jessica, oh my God, is that you? Becky, I didn't know you were coming. <laughs> this girl was not talking to me. She was talking to someone behind me and I know both of them saw me in the middle waving like a dumbass trying to start a conversation and they disregarded my whole existence bro that's <laughs> all i'm saying is they better chill with the disrespect because the last person to get rejected at an art camp started camps of his own so after that happens I'm, I'm about ready to call it quits and just dip but i bump into this girl who i could tell was as nervous as me and i'm pretty sure she could tell that i was nervous as well because we both sat down without a word no hello or nothing and just partnered up just relieved we could find a partner without having to look anymore so everyone pairs up and the instructor tells us that we have to draw our partner without looking at the paper and only looking at them so we look at each other and make eye contact for the first time and i can't lie this girl was kind of fine so we get to draw on each other and eventually we get the courage to start talking i mean staring into someone's soul for five minutes is a great icebreaker it's kind of hard to not start a conversation after looking at someone for so long helen keller could never so we finished drawing each other hers was asked by the way and we spend the rest of the class like learning and stuff but i'm not gonna lie me and let's name this girl ash me and ash are just chatting the whole time bro we're talking about art what we like what school we go to like all that fast forward to the end of class and ash asked <laughs> the end of class and asked <laughs> Fast forward to the end of class and Ash asked to see my art. God damn. So I pull up my art Instagram on her phone and I follow myself. And I'm not gonna lie, that shit, that shit had me feeling like the smoothest shit to come out of South Carolina since Duke Dennis. Chop it up for a little bit more and then we go our separate ways. Now this art camp thing happened every Saturday. So during the next week, I'm hyped as hell waiting for the next Saturday to come so I could see Ash again. Now around that time, I also made my YouTube account because at this point I had been posting on my IG quite consistently. Like I had around a thousand followers on IG and about a hundred subscribers on YouTube. And with that massive influx in fame, I started to take YouTube a little more seriously. But the problem was school, YouTube, and talking to a girl full time, I was stretched a little thin and something had to give. So unfortunately, I had to make the hard decision of cutting off school completely from my regimen. But because I stopped taking school seriously, my grades tanked, bro. Like I think I had a 37 in pre-cal, but I had a promising career and a baddie, so I could care less. So the Saturday for the camp comes along and I'm excited. I'm packing, I'm texting Ash and stuff like that. But then my mom knocks on my door and by knock, I mean, she knocked twice and then opened the door immediately. And she comes in on hot, bro. She's yelling. Her boyfriend comes in. He's yelling. How you got a 37 on calculus? Da, 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 da. I didn't raise you like this. They're going off. And I kind of just let them get it out without saying a word until I hear, you're crazy if you think I'm letting you go to this camp. Bam, slams the door. And just like that, I was cooked. I mean, Ash lived 45 minutes away, didn't go to the same school as me. I had no way to get to the camp and you can only text someone but so much. So I didn't go to that class or the next one or the next one. And eventually a month and a half passed and the class ended. And during that time, I couldn't lock in on my grades to be able to go to the class again because YouTube was more important to me. So I'm thinking it's over until this one day I'm at school and I get a text. Hey, I'm gonna be going to the Christmas lights with my cousin tonight. I was wondering if you wanted to go with me. Now my pre-cal grade right now is either a 37 or a number too low for me to wanna openly admit on YouTube. So there was no way my mom was gonna let me go. But this was my chance to see Ash again and I was not gonna miss it. And once again, 
if I have a problem, I'm going to come up with a solution. So I spent the rest of that class period making a plan. So the Christmas lights were at 10, which was around the time my mom gets home from work. And I knew if I could turn off my bedroom light and leave before 10, my mom would think I'm asleep. So I could go to the lights and when I come home, I'll just go in through the back door because we had chickens. So if the back, if me opening the back door woke anyone up, I could just be like, yo, I was just checking on the chickens. So I had my way out and I had my way back. Now I just had to figure out transportation. Now the lights took place in North Austin, which is a $30 Uber there and back. Well, I mean, $60. And 17 year old me had absolutely no motion. I was sedentary. So $60 was in no way feasible. But I did have a way that I could get $45 illegally. I'll tell you how I did that in a different story. Just, just stay with me. So I go get the $45 really quickly and continue on with my plan. So I was going to have to spend $15 on a bus ticket there and then $30 on an Uber back. So I take the money that I got illegally. It was cash. This sounds sus as but I go to a CVS during my lunch break at the school. I sneak out, go to CVS, I'm, and I buy one of those prepaid Visa cards so I can pay for the Uber because you can't pay Ubers with cash. School ends, I go home, and the time for me to catch the bus hits. So I turn my bedroom light off, and on some Disney Channel sh like put covers like under my sheet. <laughs> There's, there's no way that would have worked, but turn the light off and I start walking a mile to the bus stop. I get on the bus, show the bus driver my ticket, it lets me in. I get on the bus, I put in my headphones and I'm chilling, bro. The fact that I was able to come up with this plan in the span of six hours, I was proud of myself, bro. I can't lie. I'm like, oh, man. This plan really worked. I'm about to go see Ash again. Okay, my dog about to cook. And then I wake up, bro. Huh? I fell asleep on the bus, bro. It was like 10 p.m. and I pulled an all-nighter the night before to finish a video and post it. This girl gave me these plans last minute. I was tired. The bus stops at this bus stop terminal thing. I had absolutely no idea where I was. I, I, I decided to call it quits, bro. I checked the Uber app to see if I can get home and I can't afford the Uber home. So I'm late for the date, but I, I just gotta see it through at this point. I checked the bus route that I I'm on and it's a completely different one than the one to get to the destination that I was trying to get to. However, I was only off by like a half mile. If I ran down the highway, I could try to make the next stop. So I get off that bus and I book it, bro. Mind you, it's like 10 p.m. I am literally running on the highway to try to get to this next stop. So I make it to the stop and of course the bus is gone, bro. It's like 10 20. I'm in the middle of nowhere late as Ash is texting me. It's a mess. And I'm just standing there with three choices. I either try to run and catch up to an automobile on foot, call my mom and tell her I snuck out and ask her to pick me up and die, or take the L and ask Ash to drive 30 minutes from the lights to me to pick me up and then take me 30 minutes back to the lights. And unfortunately, I go with that choice. So I go into a Chinese restaurant on the side of the road and I wait for Ash and them to pick me up. Car pulls up, I hop in, and no one is feeling me, bro. That car, <laughs> that car is awkward as fuck. Bro, no one is saying anything. So after a long 30 minute drive, we finally make it to the Christmas lights. We get out and me and Ash are like walking around looking at all the lights and stuff. <laughs> in silence, no one no one is saying anything. She was way too mad and I was way too embarrassed for the situation to not be awkward. Mind you, I've only met this girl once and I was like a month and a half ago. I've never met her outside of camp and her first impression of me was having to drive an hour to pick me up because I was too broke for an Uber and too stupid for a bus. So needless to say, it, it's really not going well. After about 10 minutes of silence and walking, we end up stopping and I pull out my sketchbook and show her a drawing that I've been working on. And finally, after getting some common interest, we start chopping it up. And after a little while, I'm, I'm finally getting her to like laugh and stuff again. And it's finally going good. We start walking again. We finish touring the lights and we end up sitting on this tree branch. And it was kind of a vibe. The wind is blowing in her hair. The Christmas lights are shining off of her face. Our eyes are locked almost in the same way they were when we first met. It was time. I grab her hand. I lean in. Oh my God, ew, no. She jerks back, you're falling out of the tree that we were in. Do you know how chopped you gotta be to make a girl lean back like she's in the matrix, bro? I made this girl lean in an angle that only Michael Jackson himself could compete with. She gets out of the tree and then she she's done, bro. She's like, I think I should go home. <laughs> she here runs to her cousin's car. She gets in the car and they're waiting for me to call my Uber back home. I call it. <laughs> <laughs> and my car declines <laughs> i guess the um what i think happened was the fee to buy the visa was more than i expected and the 15 dollars i spent on the bus ticket plus that left me with less than 30 dollars to get the uber back so i'm sitting there damn near mentally scarring this girl they had to drive an hour to pick me up i'm like yo you trying to <laughs> you try to drive me home mind you 
I think we're like 45 minutes from my crib, bro. Flash says it and calls me an Uber and I get in feeling absolutely defeated, bro. And needless to say, it, it did not work out after that. I'm in that, bro. Moral of the story. I don't even think I have one, bro. That shit was just tough.